This video is going to cover the Studio AAA CRT screen glow effects for Photoshop, how to use them, how to install them into Photoshop, just like the thinking behind them so that you can use them more effectively in your own work. If you want to get more information about creating glitch art with like CRT screen inspiration or effects, or if you'd like to know more about the analog context behind glow on a CRT screen, then I recommend you watch the video I uploaded last month, which has like a bit more information on it but uh, essentially just for this video today in very simple terms the CRT glow effects that I'm going to show you uh, relate to how a CRT screen emits light through what are known as phosphors in the screen. The phosphors are red, green and blue little dots or sometimes lines on the CRT screen not entirely controlled by but they're influenced by a magnetic field inside a CRT screen which is why if you put a magnet on a CRT screen it goes all weird. Over time, the magnetic field and the parts of the CRT screen degrade, particularly like on the edges of the screen, and you encounter what is known as chromatic aberration. Now, chromatic aberration is something I like to use in my own work whenever I create a glow effect in Photoshop. So yeah, that's kind of what this is inspired by and the effect that I'm aiming for. The term CRT is often like misappropriate or mis like um, applied to other effects that just refer to like retro or glitchy artwork. But yeah, for this effect, it's just focusing on replicating the nice, warm, nostalgic, like retro style glow effects that you will maybe have seen if you grew up watching television on a CRT television or, you know, uh, if you are nostalgic about CRT screens. If you've heard anything about chromatic aberration in a photography context, that is not what this is. We're not dealing with anything to do with lenses or removing chromatic aberration in this video or anything like that. Right now, when I'm recording this video, the page is not yet ready for the actions from my website that I'm gonna cover, but I'll put it on screen because by the time I've edited this video, there'll, there'll be something that you can look at. As always, just go and download the CRT Glow Effects from StudioAAA.com if you haven't already. Once you take the pack through checkout, you'll be emailed the download link and you will also be redirected to a download page. You can grab the files that you need from either of those pages. What you'll get is this file, which is an ATN file, which just stands for action. Obviously, I've already got these actions in my Photoshop installed already, but the easiest way to install any Photoshop action is just by double clicking on the ATN file itself with Photoshop open in the background. If for whatever reason that doesn't work, you can also go to window, make sure actions is ticked, and then when your actions panel pops up, at the top right, just click on these three lines here and go to load actions and then just navigate to wherever you saved the file you got from my website. Obviously I'm not going to do that because uh, mine are already here. Once you have successfully installed the actions you'll see this little folder come up in your actions panel called CRT glow effects. You might see here that there is like I've got more uh, because this pack isn't finished yet so there'll be more actions added in the future. The ones in this folder here just are not ready yet basically so just ignore that. I've got this like quick design here I threw together is similar to some of the artwork that will be on the product page. I'll have already shown on screen art, I think. Also, somewhat inspired by design by my friends over at a studio called Obi and Japari. Uh, I will put the work on screen if I can find it, because I know I remember it, but I don't know if I'll be able to find the exact one and I'll link it in the description as well. I'm going to demo the action on this today. Super easy. So just come to your folder that you installed and choose an effect. I'm going to start with the soft glow effect though to begin with. Now I've got my design in a folder here. The actions in this pack will only work on a layer. So I'm going to convert it to a smart object. So I've got all the layers just in one smart object now and then click play. Obviously you get this message here, but I don't need this because I've uh, obviously I made the effect and I'm going to explain it to you anyway. What you get in your output is this folder named RGB. Your original layer will also be preserved so you can see here my smart object below um, survived. That doesn't get deleted or anything like that just gets hidden. If you open up the RGB folder, it has split your work now into the red, green, and blue channels, and it's color coded as well, so it's really easy to use. For the action I chose, all that gets added is a basic Gaussian blur on each channel. Now for this action, I have set the blur to apply slightly differently on each layer. So you can see here that even though the input layer, if you look, it's just white text, we're still getting this like nice chromatic glow around the edges, and that's because the red 
red layer has a different strength gaussian blur to the green which has a different to the blue and and so on so they're all set to like a different strength for the effect obviously i spoke about at the start of the video the phosphors in a crt screen becoming like slightly misaligned and so differing of the blur on each channel means that in the middle here go to like uh, really really zoomed in i don't know if this comes across super well on the video toward the center of the layer it's closer to white and then the further out you get that's when it becomes tinted the tint that i've got here is kind of like a sepia red orange to like a greeny blue so if i start editing the blue layer and i turn strength of the gaussian blur down and um, you can get this window open by just double clicking where it says gaussian blur under smart filters by the way if i turn that down you'll see now that the tint is changing to purple and green. Or if I turn it up, the sepia effect will kind of wash out the other colors as well. Or if I do the same with the red, so if I turn the red up, you'll see the blue becomes more prominent within the layer. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the red to basically be only very slightly blurred. And I'm gonna leave the red alone. If you look at my original design, this is where I had it in the layer. I'm gonna leave the red exactly where the original design was. And and then on the green, if I turn up the glow on the green, and just using my arrow keys, if I nudge it to the left a little bit, like to there, come up to the blue and do the same. So I'll turn up the glow a little bit more, but I'm gonna nudge the blue layer to the right a little bit. You can see now um, there's this nice like chromatic blur effect that is applied around the edges that sort of becomes stronger and more noticeable the closer to the edge of the layer that, that you kind of get, if that makes sense. So if you're applying effects like this to an image, just remember that if you line everything up, the colors in your image will remain the same and unaffected by the chromatic aberration. But if you want chromatic aberration in certain areas of the image, then you just apply these effects to that area of the image if that makes sense obviously like if i wanted let's say if i do something really strong here by turning up these blurs and like moving the red off a little bit and the green off a little bit if i then go and apply a mask to the rgb layer like this and then just turn my design on in the background come to properties and just feather that mask a little bit um, not the best like this doesn't look super pretty but you can see that the further out I come on the text layer um, the more you see the chromatic aberration so because the effect completely preserves your original layer you can be selective for where you want the effects to appear basically I'm going to delete the mask now and I'm just going to delete the RGB layer because I'm going to run this action again now the one I'm going to show you next is the CRT glow and glitch effect so I'll select that in the actions panel with my design selected and press play now you can see here that um, there is very, very obvious glitch applied um, to each of the sort of shapes here. What you do with this part of the effect will depend on your document size and the scale of the image you are working with. This is a little bit too obvious for me. So you'll see now that as well as a Gaussian blur effect, there is a wave effect applied to each of these layers. So if I want this effect to become less noticeable basically with the the glitchiness on each of the layers. I'm just gonna double click on the wave effect and turn up the minimum wavelength. If, you, if you're not familiar with the term wavelength, just adding this bit in, in an extra recording while I'm editing. Uh, I did quite a bad job at explaining what amplitude and wavelength mean. All you need to know for the context of amplitude and wavelength in Photoshop is that wavelength is the distance between any two points on a wave. So when you have a very small wavelength in the effect I'm talking about now in the video, the waves are very, very obvious on the image. Whereas when you increase the wavelength, um, the distortions are further apart and so they're less obvious in the image. And then in a moment, I will also refer to amplitude in this video and amplitude it just refers to how tall or um, strong the wave effect is that is being applied to your work. So in simple terms, amplitude is telling you how big or strong the effect is and wavelength is telling you how long or short it is. So yeah, I'll cut back to the video now and this was the correct explanation. So that's why here you can see like, you can literally see the squares in the square wave. So now if I want those to be less obvious and maybe you only want the square wave to be visible and cutting your work up like two or three times, then you need to turn up the minimum value for the wavelength. I don't know why Photoshop has like, this is such a backwards way of applying a wave to your work for this menu, but you know, 
we won't go into that today. Um, I'm sure if this was an AI feature, it would have like a nice menu and stuff, but whatever. So you see there that the wave is now much less obvious on the red layer. You can see here where the higher frequency waves are coming through. I'm going to go and turn the minimum wavelength up again on the green and then again on the blue. And you should see now we only have a few areas in the image where the waves are lining up to look like um, obviously distorted by a square wave. If you wanted to, you can also give each channel a different wave. So if I want the blue channel to have a sine wave, sine is just a smooth wave, just an S, basically turn on its side, click on type and then just click sign and click OK. Uh, then I can change the green layer to have a triangle wave. Triangle wave is like what it sounds like instead of being a sign it's just yeah like a triangle uh i'll put i'll put images like on the screen but i'm sure you all know about sine waves and and stuff so yeah then the green channel has a triangle wave effect on it and the red channel has a square wave effect on it i appreciate that that's not very obvious so if you wanted to do something like really 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 obvious then you can go and turn up the amplitude you can see in the tiny little preview photoshop gives you there that when i turn up the amplitude yeah you can see the wave being affected there so i'm going to turn it up only a little bit on the blue channel and then if i come into my wave settings for the green channel and do the same with the amplitude and then in the red one i'll do the same again not too far for this one because the square wave like it's quite quite a harsh wave and obviously like at this point when you've got an effect like this this is not like an effect you would get on a real monitor or like um like something would have to be very very broken to output this type of effect but just for the purposes of demonstrating what these wave effects are actually doing yeah sometimes it's easier to to like picture it in your head when they're very very exaggerated so yeah that covers the glitch effect now I'm going to delete that because I'm now going to show you how this action called chromatic aberration prep action works. So if I just click play with this one, nothing happens because all it's done is separate the layers into their RGB channels. And now you can just go and add whatever effects you want. So if you know what you are doing in Photoshop, this is just like a nice shortcut to have. Uh, this way you don't need to spend a lot of time separating each channel uh for your layers individually but yeah from this point you can go in and like do whatever you want really to create your chromatic aberration effect if you want more customization this is kind of the one for you i don't really know what kind of effect i'm adding right now but um like i always say in these videos like the best part of any effects hopefully that i show you is just going to be the part where you get to do like your own trial and error basically um until you're actually happy with the effect rather than me just showing you one effect and you're stuck with the one effect that i chose to like demo in the video if that makes sense what i would really like because when i'm gonna i'm gonna post this poster uh, online is kind of like a purple to red almost like a pink glow so i'm just going to try and build that up now a little bit just using the arrow keys in terms of where you take the effect afterwards i'd class this effect well it, this effect is like more of a real world effect so um i won't be using any like mixed media textures on this uh because it just wouldn't make sense for chromatic aberration to appear on paper or in like print media in my opinion so yeah i'm maybe just gonna add some like of the more digitally done textures like scanner trash or the vhs textures just to give it like an actual screen effect another important thing to note just while i'm sort of wrapping this up is that if you're gonna run this action more than once in your document um just go and rename these layers so just call it like our this name of your design or whatever and do that for the others and just rename the group as well because if you try and run it again uh, there are steps in the action where photoshop is told to apply you know a certain effect to a layer named r and then a certain effect to a layer named g certain effect to a layer named b and then if you are running the action when there are already other layers in your document with those names basically um photoshop or get confused and it won't know sort of where you want the actions to go if that makes sense you can also just convert your flow effect when it's done to a smart object and it'll preserve the chromatic aberration as long as you do it on the group itself rather than on the individual layers uh, if you want to then go 
water and add like some more glow. Just trying to make sure I make something that actually comes across in the screen recording well, because uh, I don't know if this is or not, because it's quite a subtle effect. But if you want to get these textures I imagine here, uh, these are free by the way, just under Scanner Trash and the VHS textures pack from my website. But yeah, that about covers it for this action. Uh, with the information I've just gone over, you can apply all this to any of these in the actions panel. I don't know why I'm pointing at my screen. Um, but yeah, you can apply, apply this to any of the actions that are included in the pack to get quick and easy chromatic aberration in your work with like a nice soft retro hopefully like a little bit nostalgic glow in your work as i said i am going to update this pack because um yeah there's more to the crt like genre of effects than just glow but this is all i've got ready right now as always i mean you might you'll have read it on screen because i wrote it in this poster i make one free graphic design resource every single month at studio aaa.com if you like this video or any of the free resources i put out uh, i would really appreciate if you subscribe or share any of this stuff with your creative friends that stuff really helps if you have any questions about this effect or any requests for other effects you would like me to cover get in touch send me a dm or leave a comment on the video if you make anything with these effects as well uh, please tag me because I, I really like seeing that stuff all my social media stuff will be underneath the video and yeah other than that thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one